I'm Daniel Coster. You may remember me from such films as The Coster of Living, Cocker Daniel, and Animal Hoarders episode 37. Throughout your existence, you may have noticed that your body possesses an interesting capability. When you turn your head in the direction of objects, you will find that you can perceive an image of the object and the world surrounding it. This is called vision, or sight, and with a little practice, you can learn to use this sense to form a coherent view of your environment, and hopefully stop bumping into things. There are also many breathtakingly beautiful things you can see in the world, for instance, me. Take a moment to point your head at some things and perceive them with your vision. Scientists have studied vision extensively and discovered that vision is carried out chiefly by organs in the skull called eyes. Now that you've started looking at things, you may have noticed that other people have gooey white roundish things in their faces. These are eyes. Take a look at how these rather remarkable little organs work to give you vision despite being built completely incompetently, but we'll get to that. The white part on the outside of the eye is the sclera, which is rather firm and keeps the eye round, which is the shape it ought to be. There are muscles attached to this that let you point your eyes in all different directions if you are so inclined. On the outside of the eye, here in the center, is the cornea, which is clear and round. Light passes from the environment through the cornea, and its waves are bent by the cornea to put it in better position to enter the eye. The light goes through the pupil, a hole in the front of the eye. This colorful bit, the iris, adjusts the size of the pupil depending on how, how bright the light coming in is. The brighter it is, the smaller the hole must become, else too much will get in and damage the inner workings. Light is now inside the eye. From there, it passes through the lens, which bends the light, and narrows it towards the retina. It passes through a fluid called vitreous humor, though I assure you it is not ha-ha humor, and I'm hoping you'll take my word for this. Light then reaches the retina. There are cells here that detect the light. Cones, which are conic, detect the color of the light. Rods, which are rhotic, detect lightness and darkness. These work better in the dark, in which you'll discover vision is much more difficult. Signals from these cells travel down the axons, which are basically thin wires. All these axons bunch up into the optic nerve and travel out of the eye into the occipital lobe of the brain which is where things get complicated, so we'll move on. The structure of the human eye is a testament to our evolutionary history. It works great, but when we look at it from the perspective of an engineer, its design is absurd. The rods and cones are actually facing away from the light source. The wires running away from these cells come toward the source, meaning light has to travel through a thick mat of wires before reaching the cells. As we saw, these bundle into the optic nerve. What we didn't see is that this nerve is right in the middle of the retina, and creates a huge blind patch in our vision, which you can see if you know how to look for it. Even after all this, the image comes in upside down. With all this, it's a wonder our vision is as good as it is. But the brain acts as a Photoshop, correcting the image into something we can understand. This seems to make no sense. That is, until we look at it, how it got to be that way. As I showed in my film, Daniel Coster invites Darwin to tea, evolution is a gradual process. Only when we understand this does the structure of the eye make sense. The first adaptation that functioned for vision was simply a patch of skin that was sensitive to light. Every successful adaptation is a very small change from the previous generation. Not only are these changes small, but in order to be selected, uh, every change must be an improvement, must work slightly better than its predecessor. When we realize this, it makes perfect sense that the eye looks not like the work of an engineer, but the product of a long struggle for survival. The eyes of squid are much better than ours, but there is one thing we evolved but that is just as good. The intellect to invent glasses. I'm Daniel Costa. Here's looking at you.